check, check, check. What is up, y'all? Um, think I'm live. Jonathan Crane here watching uh, Athens Twilight. This is a race from a few weeks ago. Oh, what's up? It looks like we already got a good number of people in the uh, in the chat watching. So this is Athens Twilight. This was one of the USA Crits races this season. I believe this was race number seven. So the reason I did not watch this at didn't do a watch along at the time when this was live is because I was there. I was at this race. I did the uh, amateur finals right before the pros. And uh, I wanted to go back and watch it because being there, you see some stuff that the stream doesn't necessarily catch and vice versa. Like the stream catches some stuff that I didn't get running around the course. Um, one thing I've already noticed is uh, the stream really flattens out how the course looks. So this that we're looking straight up right here, it's basically like 3% kick to the intersection there and then it flattens out and then 3% kick again. Uh, so I'm somewhere right above my head here. That's uh, I was watching from there and kind of running from the front straight to the back straight uh, during this during this race. This is not the course they normally use for at Twilight. This is a little bit of an alternative course for some road road work and stuff, but uh, this is a really much more technical course than what it looks like. It's uh, it's just four corners, but it is uh, it's it's almost never flat on this course. Like this looks flat right here, but you come out of that corner, you're going up about two or three percent right here up to this intersection and then you're going down three percent into the corner which is corner three is really tight really technical this is way more downhill than it looks that's uh whoop. come on there we go usa crits is failing me i'm on stream all right skipping <laughs> So this course uh, is known to be really technical. This is uh, this is the course. Last time they had the race on this version. Yo, what's up, Tom? Welcome. Uh, last time we had Athens Twilight on this course was 2016, and uh, that was a race where two riders lapped up three times. So the same two riders lapped the field, got back in. One of them would attack. The other one would cover it. Because in crit racing, uh, once you've lapped the field, you're basically only racing. Everyone finishes on the same lap, but the people who have lapped the field are automatically position one and two. So every time one of those guys goes, the other one has to cover it. So the interesting thing about this race is that despite sort of having the, uh, the A squad here, Legion was not able to just manhandle it like they were. Uh, a lot of the other races. They did have a slightly different plan going in here, though. Um, so Athens is one of the most prestigious crits, longest-running crits. This has been going on since the late 70s, early 80s, so a long, long time now. And uh, Legion has Ty Magner on the team, who, great crit racer. Um, I want to say former, maybe junior national champion. He's been national champion of, of something at some point, but... He was on United Healthcare back when they were dominating all of the American crits, and he lives in Athens. I uh, believe he's like from Athens originally, at least went to college there. He actually went to school with uh, Hunter from my team, um, who who went to UGA. They went to UGA together and raced uh, together there. So we got Thomas Gibbons going off the front here. He is looking to scoop up all of these early points. Um, USA Crits Race, they're generally points uh laps that count toward the jerseys uh there's one early on this must be the early on points lap and then there's one mid race and there's one in the last uh third of the race and then the points you get in the finish so gibbons has been really good about uh sneaking sneaking up and grabbing those early race points and that's how he's stayed so he's in the lead right now <laughs> yo what's up scott um He's been really good about uh, about scooping up all those early race points where Legion is really not not interested in those. So to get back to what Legion is doing here, Legion, uh, you know, normally they are setting up the sprint for a Corey Williams or a Justin Williams. 
I think the plan for this race going in, uh, having some some knowledge of what they were after here, is uh, they were looking to get a win for uh, Ty Magner. So Ty is the the hometown hometown hero here, and uh, I, these lights were pretty awesome. I gotta say, uh, they uh, the production of this race is crazy. You can see in that shot straight down the start finish. It's like out of control uh the the number of people and the, they got a dj which i didn't actually love the dj but so already this course is really selective it doesn't look like it but basically you're going up or down this whole time and then down this this is like three percent down this camera angle really doesn't do that corner justice that's corner three um it's three percent downhill into this corner and then this corner is uh the tightest that it pinches down, you're hitting that. I mean, we were doing in the amateur finals, hitting that corner at 32. So there's no telling. These guys are probably hitting it at 35. And then that entire front front straight, this uh, start finish between corner four and corner one, this is all uphill. So there's really not a lot of, I mean, you know, there's drafting, but it's not a course where you're just getting towed around. It's like, very technical you're either fully on the pedals this section or you're fully off the pedals pretty much on that uh three percent downhill going into corner three and uh i think thomas gibbon said it well when he he posted something on instagram when he found out which version of the athens course it was this year the normal version of the course he was like you know that's kind of a normal crit course there's a little hill in it that's enough to make some selections but this version of the course is going to be like 80% attrition. Almost everybody is going to get dropped. Uh, let's see who's jumping back in. One of the Nashville local guys here. Is that Preston? Yeah, that's uh, that's Preston Beasley in the shiny shoes right there. Nashville local kit. That's a dude I race with locally. I guess he's taking a free lap or maybe he's already pulled. Oh, they neutralized it. There was a crash. Okay, so I remember this happening. There was a crash early on and they neutralized the race. And uh, I didn't see the crash, and I guess the stream didn't pick up the crash either because I'm not seeing it. Um, it's pretty sick, though. I could I could run basically from this side straight over and, and kind of catch a little bit of the action on both sides. Uh, you can see this race is like... Th so right behind this camera view, there's a beer garden that's just like people going back. You got this whole... It really fills out. And this race is awesome. Um, UGA is here. It really fills out with uh, with fans and just like random people. At this race, I always find myself talking to people who don't know anything about bike racing and like, you know, kind of explaining how it works or whatever. Anyone ride today? I rode, it was raining today, so I rode two hours on Zwift, which was, it was pretty fun. I got a couple of races in. They were not uh, exactly what I was looking for, but how about you, ML? You get a ride? Um... So this day, Athens Twilight, I actually, you have to race twice if you're an amateur. You have to race once to qualify and then once again uh, in the amateur finals. So I was smoked watching this race. I was uh, draping myself over the barriers. I wonder if, if I'll see myself in here. I probably wouldn't even be able to tell uh, from the stream quality, but I'm somewhere in here watching the race. And, but there were things like that neutralization where, like, when you're out there, if you're not within earshot of the uh, of the announcer, you're not totally sure what's going on. You're hearing people. There was also, I couldn't see a Jumbotron anywhere. So no matter where you were standing, you couldn't see some of the um, some of the lap. Cool. What Grand Fondo was that? Um, I haven't done a Fondo. I guess I only did one Fondo this year. I did a uh, Chiha Challenge. So you can see Justin Williams here in the uh, in the middle of the screen, white kit. That's the Belize National Champion kit. Um, I think uh, I was surprised to see him not have a great race. Although this is not not exactly the kind of course he likes. It is all up or all down. There's not a lot of flat where you can carry speed. Fondos are weird. They're uh, I mean it can be super fun, but they're like. It's like a road race with almost no tactics. It's just like a Fondo is almost like a gravel race on road bikes. I feel like that only makes sense if you've done gravel races, but uh, Chihawk 
Chiha climbs Mount Chiha two different ways. Each of them is about 20 minutes at pace. Uh, it's pretty b brutal climb. I mean, it's the biggest climb in the state, so it's uh, it's gnarly. I mean, I I threw up coming up the backside climb this year, so it's uh, it's not a uh, it's not easy. Yeah, the the gravel race comparison is basically just that like it's not as tactical usually in a uh, Grand Fondo. People are just kind of riding as hard as they can ride, and there's not really like usually teams controlling it and like a peloton and a breakaway it's like a mass start with a ton of people and it just kind of breaks up into these little groups and uh you get a lot of people who are very strong that like don't really race road too so there's kind of some weird dynamics uh in that sense where you, you get these these strong small groups forming oh this is an interesting thing about this race so on the front here, that is uh, Team Medellin from Colombia. They're in the uh, all-navy kits with the white uh, helmets. Not a lot of logos on their kits. Almost looks like the Legion kit without any uh, orange on it. But they've got um, Oscar Sevilla on that team, the um, Spanish rider who got uh, caught doping. <laughs> And uh, went down to Colombia after his suspension ran up, and he's racing for a team Medellin now. Uh, I think Medellin, that team was kind of caught off guard how strong this racing is. I mean, racing in Colombia is super strong, but those guys were uh, caught, caught out a little bit, I think, by the Legion tactic of just like going to the front and setting a hard pace. Although you can see in this race, even though Legion, so they got the A squad, they've got... Tyler Williams, Justin Williams. Uh, pull up the results here and see who all they had. Tyler Williams, Justin Williams, uh, Ty Magner. Um, yeah, they, they had the A squad for sure, but you don't see them lined up six deep, all Legion riders on the front. On the front, like you see at other races in the USA Crits series this year. And I think that's indicative of of how hard this course is to control. You just can't uh, you just can't set that twenty eight thirty two mile an hour pace that they love to set and just pin it there. It's uh especially this downhill. You're really jostling for position. This camera angle really doesn't do it justice. This corner is so crazy. <laughs> You're going downhill so fast. And uh, it's really a game of chicken. Like, everybody is coming into this corner. No, actually, that's four. The corner for this, three. Um, everybody's coming into that corner, and it's kind of like whoever breaks last is going to get around or, or pedals. So you really don't have to break. If you're breaking on this course, you're doing it wrong. But uh, some guys will be pedaling through that downhill to make up a couple of spots and then have to hit a little breaks at the last second. It gets so crazy. God, this, this race was so strung out. This is not a good course to be in the back. There's a friend William was coming through in the back there. I did not envy him doing this race. I had a few uh, friends, like people that I raced with locally who stepped up and did this race. Uh, William got a guest ride with uh, Robson Forensic Team and uh, Jack White from Mississippi was riding with uh, Support Clean Sport Guten Plan. At, uh, at this race, uh, he races for Insured, not the esports side of Insured, but the gravel side of Insured. Uh, I had a good race with some of the next PB Insured guys earlier today. It's pretty fun. You can see Legion keeps trying to come to the front like this and set the pace. Uh, I think that might be Alec Cowan sitting second wheel there with the, uh, the hair. But... It's like they just can't keep control of the front. And I think some of that is the accordion effect is so pronounced on this course. <clears throat> the slowdown into corner three, three, four, and then it's up this hill the whole way. And you, you just can't sit in the wheels. It's so much about the momentum you're carrying and having a good line. Got uh, Spencer Movenzada up here sitting third wheel. He was racing really aggressive at this race. Um... This was really a, a Legion and Best Buddies battle for sure. <clears throat> um, you, Butcher Box is kind of a, a 
second tier team looking to uh to grab a little bit a little bit of points uh here and there maybe maybe scratch a win Mo Gonzalez is riding super strong though I feel like he he hasn't gotten quite the credit he's been due this season uh he's been so consistent and he's just off that uh best young rider jersey it would be good to see him take that he's been riding so aggressive and doing a lot of it for himself because he hasn't had a ton of help uh other butcher box guys just haven't been making these these selections a lot of these races have been so fast from the gun that it's like the race starts it's fast and you're just kind of locked in position like you don't really have much of uh an opportunity an, an opportunity to move up when it's being held at 28 30 miles an hour the whole time it's like what are you going to do pull out into the wind and you just can't you can't do that there's not not so much churn when legion is making it so fast speaking of legion making it so fast uh i don't know how many crits they do in colombia but i don't think that's as common there as it is here so i think that medellin team um what kind of came in expecting to do these sort of like road races and like maybe sit a little farther back and work their way up and like they got just totally caught. So this was uh, the second race of Speed Week. Speed Week is a week of crits every day uh, through like South Carolina, Georgia. It's gone a little farther than that sometimes, but this year it was like uh, Spartanburg, Athens, Grant Park, uh, a few random ones in Georgia. <laughs> Uh, this was the first race where it wasn't just like blistering hot. <laughs> That's uh, so a lot of the riders that maybe suffered in the heat, like especially in Tulsa, you saw guys getting heat stroke and stuff. Um, this was the first one where it wasn't just like totally insanely hot. So some of the guys who maybe don't do as well, a lot of the riders from like the Northeast or maybe even from Colorado have a little bit of easier of a time in uh in temperatures like this they can hold on a little bit longer you can see riders already getting pulled select a little group here two two from legion represented i believe that's uh confusingly this the second guy there in the blue kit is danny summerhill from uh he's pulling now I believe that's danny summerhill from uh from Best Buddies, he's not in the same kit as everyone else from Best Buddies because he is the lap leader. So he's trying to get into these early breakaways. Lap leader, uh, you get points every time you come across the start-finish first. You get lap leader. Yeah, no problem. I think that's... Is that Pete ML? Is that Pete? I think so. I can't, can't remember everybody's uh, screen names, but I think that is Pete. Um, so... Summerhill is trying to be super aggressive early on and get into these breakaways because honestly, a lot of times if you get into the breakaway and you're going after those uh, those first through the got those those lap leader points, that's what they're called, lap leader points, and no one else is. People are happy to let you take the pull through the start finish every time and pick up those points. Um, so it's actually great if you're in a breakaway and you have someone who who wants those those lap leader points and they're not going to sprint you for them. They'll just go to the front and pull. That's kind of a good mix is like somebody who wants this break to go all the way, somebody who wants some of the mid-race points because um, you're not going to be fighting each other for those objectives. I mean, obviously, everybody's going to try to win it at the end, but you're not going to be playing games. This is a course where, especially with the super technical nature of uh man they were ripping that corner summerhill just absolutely flying through that one uh this is a course where a small group really go can go about as fast as a large group though um again there's like almost no flat on this course it's kind of only flat for the the really short block between corner one right here and corner two it's flat ish it's kind of actually i should get into this so you got corner one right here that they're about to hit. You go through corner one, and you really can't see this on TV, but corner one, it dips down immediately right there. So that's a downhill into corner two. You see everybody almost coming off the pedals there, coasting the downhill, and then it's back uphill right here. It's uphill from here to the intersection, and that's like a 3% uphill. This was actually the spot in my race where people were able to make a separation and start getting away you can kind of see on the 
stream there that it kind of crests over that little hill. Um, so that's a spot because that little uphill on the back stretch there, you're coming out of corner two and then you have a short little burst of speed there. It's It was so hard to... Uh, <laughs> zero percent in this race although uh in the amateur race i would imagine it would be significantly higher i some of these teams are sponsored by like some sketchy wheel brands though some some like brands that are the same thing as i can basically like a uh a chinese wheel brand that is just rebranded you know they they buy open bold wheels and put a logo on them so now legion's got three in this move i believe yeah one two three <clears throat> so legion they're, they're having to adjust on the fly here i think i think they came in uh to just fast spin up the wheel <laughs> up the hills no i uh i tend to grind a pretty low cadence that's just i, I think that's because i'm uh because of all the cyclocross, I, I, I've gotten used to, even on Zwift today, I, I kept looking and I would notice that I was just doing 76 cadence or something, like 76, 85, somewhere in there. Um, so I have a tendency to kind of grind a, uh, a big gear up these hills. That might not be the the most efficient way to do it, I don't know, but it's uh, it works for me, I don't know. This hill is so much steeper than it looks, too. I mean, it's it's a solid 3%. You can see him out of the saddle there. I mean, he has that, like, climbing uh, body body language where you're kind of up over the front of the bike, really pushing down on the pedals uh, more than that, like, sort of forward motion you get when you're, uh, when you're seated. Riders behind realizing the train may have left the station and uh, having a moment of panic. No idea who this is from uh, Nashville local here, but interesting to see them getting involved in the chase. Uh, my guess is that might have been uh, TJ Killalea. Um, so this is a this is an interesting race because the hill the the nature of the like constant hills of this is really gonna mix it up from the the heavier guys that normally have an advantage in these races the heavier powerhouse guys having to oh come on slow down for corner three and then also slow down come off the power and then go up this hill every time it's kind of like a nightmare scenario for for bigger guys in this race because corner three is going to slow you down some. Uh, I guess I haven't talked about the ground coming out of corner three, so uh, I'll talk about it when we get there, but most of the pavement is pretty good on this course. Uh, this corner one was super wide. You could almost just pedal all the way through it. They do a good job of, of pushing the barriers out a little bit where they need to be pushed out to give you a little bit of extra room to take these corners. This is that spot where if someone was going to launch an attack, they do it right here. You get a little gap there, and then it's just going to hold steady on that whole downhill because there's really a speed limit to how fast you can take turn three. So nobody wants to do that work and then have to break and uh, break and scrub that speed off. So I believe that Legion has a couple of guys that are just not pulling through here. They've got at least one guy who's contributing. They've only got 15 seconds at this point. So I'm wondering if this is the group that... So I'll go ahead and tell you guys, this race was so crazy. Uh, being there watching it, it was all over the map. I mean, stuff was going away. It breaks into multiple groups. Uh, people are... People, people. It got so confusing watching it as a spectator at home. So I'm not sure if this break comes back and then another one goes with a similar composition or if this is one of the groups that stayed away, but maybe it maybe it gains a couple of riders and then some more break away from this group. But this race got so crazy. Twenty second gap right now. 
So the gap is still going up. Uh, these guys are going away. Really, at this point, it's like who's who's going to chase it back because Best Buddies has one ride up there, rider up there. They're one of the strongest teams, uh, so that's five guys that aren't chasing. Legion has three in there, so they're definitely not chasing. Butcher Box has Spencer, which like if they want to get someone in the break, it's probably going to be Spencer or it's going to be Connor Saley. So then the chasing is really kind of left to these uh, sort of second tier teams, which on a normal on a normal flatter USA crits course, I would say maybe automatic would be going to take the chase up uh, right here, or you know Medellin might take the chase up, but I think the technical nature of this course doesn't suit them. And then automatic, I say that they're not going to take it up just because. They have some strong guys, uh, Daniel Swan. They, they've got plenty of, of strong guys who can definitely do some early donkey work. But this course is so technical. It's so hard to move up. Uh, you can't really do that. And then their guy who really is a diesel and can just get on the front and chug is Thomas Gibbons. And he is on that heavier end of the spectrum that this course just doesn't really play great for them. Yeah, I think Legion's strategy just kind of got blown up uh, from the gun. Like, that's what made this a race I wanted to go back and watch. Like, I'm not going to go back and do a uh, rewatch of every race that happened this season that I happened to miss. But this one, uh, because Legion was not able to do their normal thing of just sitting five or six deep on the front, I'm going to make an in-depth video where I really break down exactly what Legion is doing. But they... Uh, they set their whole team on the front and they only rotate as many guys as they need to, to keep everything under control. Um, a little bit of an artistic camera angle there showing the, showing the trophy, showing the tiny lap counter up there, 58 laps to go. But yeah, that's, that's Legion's usual strategy is to just take control of the front and keep it controlled. And they want it to be a field sprint because they have three of the best field sprinters uh, on a given day, probably two, I would say that Ty Magner is probably one of the best field sprinters uh, in America. He's the one who ripped the field apart on day two of Tulsa. And uh, Justin, I don't, Justin didn't sit up. Justin's still in there right here. He's uh, sitting about 10th wheel. So he's trying to stay up there in contact. But I think this was uh, Legion realizing that they could not just set that fast tempo because the the speed is so variable on this course. What Legion loves to do is put it at like 28 miles an hour, somewhere between like 28 and 32 miles an hour, and just pin it there. And at speeds like that, really one or two guys are just not going to get that far away. Uh, it's it's The draft is so strong at those speeds that it would take a really big group getting away, and they're just not going to let a big group get away. It's so hard to get significant separation at those speeds. But on this course, uh, with this sort of like roller coaster from corner one to corner two, there's some like, you go through this corner, speed goes up naturally without you pedaling. And then corner two right here, you got to kind of stop pedaling right there. Speed goes down. You go into the little uphill, speed still down, power, hard power right here then the downhill, like they can't just keep it as consistent. The speed is kind of up and down and up and down. And when that happens, there's that game of chicken. So if somebody is willing to pedal real hard and break a little later, that strategy of just keeping the super consistent, super high speed, um, it's just not as bulletproof as it is in most of these races. So I think Legion's strategy here, once it started breaking up and things started going up the road is they were trying to uh, put enough of their guys in this move. They have two guys that are just sitting on the back, not working in this group. I'm pretty sure. So I think what they were trying to do is inundate these breakaways with Legion guys so that everyone else would look at each other and say like, well, I'm not going to drag three Legion guys away. We're going to stop working and then, uh, you know, it'll come back. So that's one way to bring, to bring a breakaway back is to actually get in the breakaway and then not do not do the work to keep it away and uh, hope that the other guys are not content to just drag you along. It seems like that most of the other guys in this breakaway are kind of wise to it and kind of just don't care. Uh, they see this as their their opportunity. Spencer Movenzada has definitely taken hard pulls. Sitting 
So Medellin is back in the field pulling. I think they're starting to realize at this point that uh, th their ship may be sailing right now. Yeah, uh, most of the teams have radios. Uh, Legion usually has radios. ButcherBox definitely has ra radios. ButcherBox is huge on the radios. They are never without radios. Um, a, a lot of the smaller teams don't have them, but I think most of these teams are are rocking the radios. Um, even like, you know, good guys. I don't think they had anybody here, but I know good guys has the radios generally. So, yep, we got riders getting pulled right here. This is a race where just throughout this course, because it is so, especially coming to, coming into corner three, if one guy breaks, I'll talk about it when we get there. So, corner one, downhill. Corner two, uphill. We're uphill here. That's uh, oh, that's one of the DC Velo Raiders. I thought that was Justin Williams for a second there in the white jersey. Not Justin Williams, though. That was DC Velo. Oh, we got uh, Thor from uh, Cliff Bar there. If anybody is a uh, is a Trainer Road podcast listener, that was one of the hosts, uh, Pete Morris from uh, from Cliff Bar Racing, right there. So this corner, in this corner, corner three, you have to break. If the guy in front of you breaks, you got to break a little more than him. The guy behind you has to break a little more. Break a little more. There's really only one or two like lines that are even makeable around that corner you can't go through that four or five wide and because of that uh the farther back you are the higher chance that someone's breaking in front of you so this is a race where like the guys who get caught at the back in that in that breaking accordion effect are just coming off the back all night so it's like a hundred guys start and there's just two at a time almost every lap two guys falling off the back the radios definitely make, going back to that, though, definitely make a huge difference. And I think Legion was really good about using the radios here. So I think that they wanted this this break to come back. They wanted to set this up as a sprint for Ty Magner. So I haven't talked to enough about Ty yet, but like I said, Ty is the hometown hero. He's, uh, he's a good dude. I've raced with him uh, here and there. I've raced with him in cycle. I say raced with him. He's completely destroyed me in cyclocross. And uh, I think I've done a few road races that he's in. But he, he's been doing a lot of the hard work for uh, for Legion. And what I heard is that part of his, the deal of his contract, he was like, we'll do the work all season. I'll set up all of the sprints, but I want y'all to work for me at Athens. He really wants to win Athens uh, during his career. This, uh, I should talk a little bit about the, this race. I mean, I, I mentioned how long running it is, but this is really like the crown jewel of American crit racing, I think. I mean, I think it's kind of almost indisputable. It's like this race and uh, maybe Tulsa Tough. I don't know, throw out some other some other top crits, but I would say it's almost undeniable that this is one of the top five like monumental crits in America. And I think that uh, Magner being like primarily a crit rider, oh, uh, we got the... Uh, the dude with the microphone there, that's the manual for speed. Uh, guys getting some coverage. Uh, they had some funny stuff from this race over on Instagram, manual for speed. And from all of Speed Week. Um, but yeah, Magna really wants a win at this one. So I think that's why Legion put three guys into this move and then they're not all working. But... Yeah, so this this break is getting to where they're almost half a lap up at this point, which means that we could be looking at a scenario where riders are lapping the field. And at that point, these five are the only ones who could win. Yeah, you can see, look at the crowds. I mean, riding this race, even riding the amateur race, it's it's like uh, you feel like you're like playing in the Super Bowl or something. It's It's awesome. At the finish of my race oh i've got a youtube video from my race that i'm gonna put out that'll have you know a lot of insight about the course and stuff it should be a pretty pretty good video i feel like from my uh, onboard perspective you can really see you get a sense of the speed and of these little gradients that it just really doesn't capture on the on the wide shot of the camera but after my race was over i mean coming up the the start finish straight i was <laughs> high-fiving people people were you know 
wiling out and that's for the amateur race it was like an hour or two before before this final race people are people are getting wild it's it's so fun i I highly recommend getting to athens twilight if you ever can i actually i was at a at a show last night at a bar and uh this guy i know locally who he rides bmx we were talking about other stuff but uh he he asked me how my bike racing was going and he he mentioned something about twilight and i was like athens twilight he's like oh yeah i've been to athens i've been to twilight like two or three times doesn't even follow bike racing he's a bmx uh not bmx racer like freestyle bmx but he would come over to twilight just like he's a bike guy it's a huge bike event there's a little bmx park set up adjacent with some guys doing jumps and stuff but he was like yeah man it's it's a party we always go to athens so like that tells you sort of the level people who like barely know anything about about bike racing or showing up just because it's like it's such a wild party yeah so the interesting thing watching this uh from the stream is that you get no sense of what the field is doing okay we got a field shot here let's see who's doing work i think that's yeah that's team medellin from colombia with one two three riders there okay and that's magner that i was talking about sitting third wheel for legion he's got the uh usa champion stripes somebody if anybody in the chat knows i don't know maybe maybe someone from birmingham is watching hunter somebody knows what he has national champion stripes from um i'm not sure what he was national champion of but definitely something that's that's how you can spot him in the legion jersey but i think that magner is uh He really hopes that they make the catch here, even though he's got three teammates in the breakaway. His teammates are really in that breakaway to just sit on and bring it back. I mean, nine times out of ten, if a breakaway has three riders from the same team, they're not contributing to the work. And what I mean by that is going to the front of the group and doing hard pulls where everyone else is drafting off of them. Um, If you have three riders from the same team in your breakaway – one or two of them are not contributing to the work normally you would pull the plug and go back to the group so it's really interesting that these guys i think they just realized that like on a course this selective if you go back to the group you might get shuffled to the back and be not get a chance to go to the front again it's not getting to the front in this race and getting off the front is not as simple as pedaling hard uh it's so technical there's so much cornering there's so much uh usually not braking unless you're behind someone who's really doing a bad job but the speed is so variable and really going up this start finish because this is one of the only places to pedal consistently hard the whole time everyone is just kind of pinning it here and like you can't get separation on this hill i know normally you think of the hill as like that's where i would get away from the group i would put down a big watt bomb and get away from the group but when everyone is working well over their threshold even if you do a full spent sprint you might get i don't know three five seconds on that hill and then everyone those positions are almost kind of locked in until you get there on the next lap because like i said there's speed limits uh on some of these downhills and on some of these corners so when you're in one of those sections where there is sort of a speed limit to it that that time gap you you've gained by pedaling hard is just going to stay locked in place and you're not going to have a chance to extend that time gap again until you hit one of those uphills i think pretty much the uphills everyone is basically taking everyone in this race in the pro field is basically taking corner three as fast as it can be taken so legion's got okay we got a mino rip on the chase now but second wheel there okay we got a group try i think some more than they're even doing like a good consistent chase we got these little groups trying to go clear here i think everybody's realizing this is uh this is an emergency you can see this group is lined up and there's like gaps between all the riders yeah this is uh pretty much single file like i said there's only really one line that you keep even can take i think that might be the whole field too so we probably lost half of the riders that started at least and that just tells you how absolutely brutal this this race is 
One, two, three, four, five, six in the break. Break is almost half Legion. Three Legion riders right there. Looks like the break is kind of, they're kind of sitting up a little bit. They're uh, they're not really putting the hammer down. Maybe they're comfortable with the gap they've got. Maybe uh, going back to the radio thing, it's totally possible that um, that someone is in, in the rider's ears uh, in the breakaway, letting them know like, hey, the guys behind are un unorganized, motivated, but un unorganized, so you guys can collect yourself. This is a long race. There is uh, a lot of time. Oh, I should talk about this. So there's been some controversy about what the length of these races should be this year. Um, I've seen some chatter about it between the riders and organizers on Twitter. And I think the, uh, the conflict is that riders want uh, a race that is long enough to really show their fitness to sort of like separate the wheat from the chaff a little bit. And that's what this, this race is. It's uh, this ended up being about an hour 40, I believe. But the USA Crits broadcasters, I mean, they really want something that's that's very watchable and digestible. So keeping it closer to that hour range, it's so much easier. I mean, even for me, like I had to kind of to do this rewatch, I had to sort of wait for a night when I didn't have anything else going on and kind of block the time out. It's, it's you know, almost twice as long as some of the other criteriums. So and. and the shorter race time sort of condenses the action. You don't get these big chunks where there's a sort of a consistent narrative for a lot of time. When the racing is shorter, almost everyone has uh, the same size matchbook and they're going to burn through all their matches by the end of the race. So people are just dropping bombs uh, with a lot more frequency. It's a lot more, it's the same amount of action, just like packed tighter. So from a viewership standpoint, I understand the uh, the need for that. Oh, we got a cool like crane shot here looking over some of the crowd and some of the little VIP tents and stuff. Um, but, but it seems like the riders want a longer race. So I think next year they may settle where all of these races end up being about uh, an hour, 15 minutes, something like that, um, which that's that. I think that's a good sweet spot for me as a racer. I love the races that are like uh, 40, 50 minutes to an hour. Cause I just like that, that short, sharp effort. Um, I really prefer, that's part of why I like criteriums over longer road races. I don't like just sitting and grinding at a consistent speed and pace cadence. I, uh, I really prefer something where you can get on top of the pedals the whole time. Looks like, we had three three riders getting pulled right there. Looks like Medellin is back on the on the chase. I think they got just like totally caught caught off guard and outgunned with how early that how early and how aggressive that got. Um, I think it became evident pretty early on to Legion that they were not going to be able to just set pace, so they started just putting guys up in the road in the breakaway. Once other guys realized that Legion was not going to just pull back the breakaway. I mean, Scott, maybe that's where it's headed. Maybe, maybe, you know, these are going to continue to get longer and longer and, and just kind of become those circuit races. I will say I like the length of these courses because, I mean, look at the almost all the way around the lap. There's, there's people. And as a spectator, you get to see the riders a lot and, they can do them in these like more interesting like downtown like there's bars and restaurants all along uh, the course here. There's like the courthouse on the other side. It's just like visually interesting. Yeah, I think one hour plus is where we're headed though. I, I'm pretty sure I saw uh, one of the USA crits like organizers saying that next year they want to make all of the series. Ooh, okay. There's Magner. Looks looks like these guys are realizing this is the moment where some of these guys are realizing that this field, it's not benefiting them at all to be in this big field. Like I said, the speed is so variable. There's not a lot of flat, so there's not a ton of advantage to be gained from drafting. And there is a ton of breaking in this corner to be done if somebody's doing it wrong. So the breakaway is about halfway you know, like if this is the course, the main pelotons here, the breakaways here, they're almost a half lap up. 
And I think this is riders in the field realizing that they have a better shot at bridging to that breakaway now that the breakaway is tired and settled into a pace. And there's not really any advantage to sitting in this field because the field is... Uh... Okay, we got Frank. Speaking of uh, Georgia... Uh, Criterium Royalty, not Ty Magner, but uh, Frank Travieso here. So this is Frank Travieso in the silver right there, uh, putting his head down and going hard. Travieso, if you don't know, Frank the Tank, he's uh, he was second at uh, at Crit Nats. I feel like no one's talking about that. He was second to Estevez at Crit Nats this year, but he he's been a top crit racer for a long time. He keeps retiring, quote unquote, but then he keeps racing at a uh, keeps racing really well at these top level crits. I think he won San Rafael in uh, 2019, which is a big crit that used to happen in California. I think that one's actually being replaced by the new crit that Legion is putting on. But yeah, Frank Travieso is a crit legend, and his uh, wife Ashley Travieso has some involvement with like putting this race on. Uh, I know she was. She handed me, handed me my number when I was registering. So Travieso and one of these Medellin riders, I think Medellin has realized that uh, they're not going to bring it back by just setting a high pace at the front of the field. It's too variable. This is a course with the technical nature of it that lends itself to a, a small group is going to go just as fast or faster than the big peloton. The thing about the big peloton is everybody is fighting for that space at the front, but then it's so tiring to do the work to get to the front that the the pace is even more variable start and stop than than the course makes it naturally. You can see that, that corner three, they keep cutting away from it. There's not a great a great angle of it on here, but man, that corner I, when you see on my footage from from the my race, uh you'll get a sense of how gnarly that corner is. Oh, I never talked about the ground in that corner. Next time we come around to corner three, the three, four area, I'll talk about how particular that ground was. This was really grippy uh, all the way around. Luckily, there was no rain here. This, I think this race in the rain would have been a bloodbath. Luckily, no major crashes in this uh, in this men's race. There was that one early on where they did the, the um, neutralization of the field, but I think from there on, there was really nothing. And even that neutralization, I don't think anybody got hurt. Uh, I didn't see anybody walking around with a broken bike or heal, hear any uh, tales of collarbones or anything. So they brought Travieso back, and now we got another counter going. This is everybody at the front realizing their uh, train maybe train maybe has left the station. <laughs> Down to 40 riders in the race. 100 and something started. 120 started. Uh, now we're down to 40 in the race. And that's, it's just that super technical nature of this course. So this section where they're riding through the uh, parking spaces that are over on our left, right or right, which right is sort of where you get pushed out from that corner. The center of those parking spaces, like under where the cars park, it's like the fluids that drip out of the parked cars have eaten away the asphalt there. So each parking spot sort of has this little like dip down, bow down thing in the middle. And when you're going 32, those little dips feel like uh, feel like BMX whoops or something. And on top of that, the surface itself is uh, ooh, I got a leg cramp. The surface itself is is really you really can't tell right here it's going through it right now that surface is really gnarled up so you're getting bumped around that's the spot where you want you want a wider tire but that's why they're not taking that one all the way to the curb there's really if you take it all the way wide there's a very thin line like right in the gutter that's pretty smooth but the the line you would think people would take like most of the way out to the right but not right with your tire against the gutter yeah, to the left of where most of them are taking it now. It's just super chunky out there. 
So effectively that corner is even narrower than what, and the, the camera angle again, you can't really tell, but it's going from like that downhill that's 3% and it's three or four lanes wide. And you take that turn and it's almost half as, half as wide. So it, it pinches down at the point where you're hitting that real hard turn. It just gets it gets so crazy in there. So 30 second gap to this breakaway. This this is a good breakaway. I mean, like I said, they got Summerhill in there. He's willing to do the work. They've got Movenzada in there. One thing that's going on in this breakaway is you've got uh, Hernandez, who's taking a pull right now in that gray jersey. He is the current uh, best young rider jersey holder. And then Spencer Movenzada that he just flicked through in the red butch butcher box jersey is second place in the best young rider competition. So those guys are kind of marking each other, but neither of them is going to let something get away that the other is in. They're close enough in the points that, you know, Movenzada could overtake if he got a significant number of points, especially if he had gotten into a breakaway as early as this one went without Hernandez because he could have picked up some of those mid-race points. Uh, one of the early things, one of the interesting things that goes on in USA Crits Racing, and I wish, I hope in the future they'll do uh, graphics with this stuff like in real time so that, you know, I, I'm not explaining it or at least I'm explaining the numbers you're seeing, but um, the mid-race there's, so there's a points sprint uh on the second or third lap and then there's one in the dead middle of the race and there's one in the last it's maybe like two or three laps to go uh but those points laps and the points in those go like five or ten deep but those points count not only for the individual competition and for the team competition but if you pick up points there that's going to count for the uh the best young rider jersey, all of those, all of those jersey competitions uh, within the race. So, if you're in a position like Movenzada where you're looking to move up in the best young rider competition, that was a point sprint, and that's why we had Hernandez right there in the gray sprinting Movenzada in the red. Because again, those are the two guys in contention for that uh, best young riders jersey. The rest of the guys in this break. Uh, don't have a uh, points-based individual competition. They're really just looking for the win in this race, except for Summerhill in the blue jersey, who is looking for the um, lap leader competition. So one of the only laps where he's not going to want to be the first one through the line is going to be the point sprint lap, because there's nothing extra for him on the line that lap. So that's why he was dead last in that group. Some more counterattacks going. I think that was even Travieso again. Yep, we got Travieso with a little uh, counterattack here. He's a guy that uh, I race with a good bit in the uh, Georgia Cross series when I go over and do those things. Uh, I almost got him in Athens in 2019, just like uh, he was within within striking distance. Frank the Tank, he's a, he is just a powerhouse. I mean, the fact that you're, if you're even still in, if you're still on course at this point, you're in the top one uh one third one fourth of the riders i mean and then just to be out here you're already a cat one or cat two so that puts you in the top percentage of bike racers Ooh, this course is so selective race is just blown up so they're talking a little bit about uh about the birmingham race Come on, what have I done here? We're still streaming. Come on. Here we go. Uh, they're talking a little bit about the Birmingham race. One thing that's interesting is, so Gibbons is not in contention here. Gibbons is back in that field, and he's going to finish the race and get some points. But being a bigger guy, this is not the race for him. And uh, his automatic team just doesn't have the firepower to control it or do anything here. So he's the overall leader. Justin uh, is out. He didn't do Birmingham, but actually Tyler Williams is really close to, uh, I'm going to look up the points right now, but Tyler Williams is really close to, so Justin Williams had the USA Crits leader jersey for most of this season. Um, 
Uh, Thomas Gibbons from Automatic won the jersey back in 2019. Um, so he's looking to repeat that. Also, I mean, I know he would love to get a win this season, but he's really been able to get that jersey through super smart racing, uh, really going for a lot of those early points. And uh, sorry, looking at my uh, my preview window there. But so that's actually Gibbons' second wheel right there through that corner. He's uh, toward the front of this group. Whoa. Yeah, that's Gibbons in the orange right there. The That's the orange leader's jersey. Gibbons, uh, Gibbons took over the leader's jersey from Justin Williams, but Tyler Williams is actually breathing down his neck. Tyler Williams, uh, you get points for every race that you complete. It's obviously more points, the better that you finish in the race. Duh. But uh, Tyler Williams did not go to Birmingham and... Had he gone to Birmingham and finished even in the top 10 or 15, he would actually be like tied or maybe even beating Gibbons in the uh, overall competition right now. So go to the Birmingham race. It's important. Okay, we got five riders here. These guys are clear of the main group, which is... Woo, okay. This is... Uh, okay. Okay. This is where it gets crazy. And I'm I'm uh I was actually standing right above where my head is here watching it live. I didn't see this move go away and I got so confused what when I was watching it on the side of the course. So here's what happened. As the original breakaway gets close to lapping up on the main field. So they are close to connecting with the rear of the main group. And once they do that, they can draft off of the main peloton, and that peloton's not going to get pulled. Those guys can sit in and, and rest up, and then they're really just racing each other within the main group. So they really want to lap up. As they get close to lapping up, the Legion and Butcher Box and Best Buddies guys who are in this main field, they really want to slow things down so that their riders in that original breakaway can make contact with the main field. As that slowdown is happening and, and the catch is about to be made, another group attacked off of that main group. So the group that attacked off the main group had a Medellin rider who they had missed the breakaway, uh, Tyler Williams, sorry, Ty Magner, who is really the guy that Legion was working for this whole time. I mean, he was, the plan was to work for Ty. Um, okay, this is our front group. They are they can see the the main group ahead here. Six. So then we've got oh the camera cutting around makes it so crazy to watch. This is the field. So there is a group between the main field, the main field the original breakaway that's about to catch them, and then there's a group that attacked from this main field that's in the middle right now. So Magner was actually second twice in this race in the past. Man, Frank Travieso, he knows that corner like the back of his hand. That was Travieso again, just ripping it. You can tell he's got absolutely no fear in this corner. Um these lights were super cool. I got to say again, the, the production value of this race was so high. Although I did notice before our race, they were working on that start finish arch and it was a uh, zip tied. <laughs> Some of the, the metal part that goes across there was zip tied to a forklift and that's how it was lifted up there. That seemed a little sketchy. So yep, they're so close. So now Travieso is 20 seconds behind the chase group. He's going to try to bridge to the second group. So we got three groups on the road now. We got the original breakaway. We got a chase group. We got the main peloton. And Travieso is trying to go from group three to group one. Here it goes. Oh, that's, so that's Oscar Sevilla. I guess let's talk about doping now. Sevilla got caught doping a few years ago, got a ban, um, and then went to South America to race for this Colombian team, as dopers often do. Seems like uh, 
I don't know. There's some sketchy. Uh, in, in my pre YouTube days, I was watching uh, just to talk about the South American like doping culture a little bit. Watching one of the Red Hook Grit races, and there's a guy wearing a neck buff over his over his face, and he was attacking. And I tweeted something like, "This random Colombian guy." is uh breaking away from like world champion track riders and he has a neck buff over his face and then he got popped for doping uh about six months later so i don't know i guess they're a little bit more forgiving of that stuff down there speaking of doping bans i've i've posted about it on on here but the uh guy who won my race the cat 2 race at sunny king got busted for doping. Actually, at Sunny King is where he got tested, but they just uh, came down with a ruling, and he is out for four years, which, good riddance. That's so lame, doping for amateur races. I mean, come on. There's not even anything on the line. Like, if you're doping to beat me, you got to think about what you're doing with your life, man. That's so whack. Okay, so the... Uh, group that's about to lap the field is 10 seconds away yeah you, <laughs> exactly you're, you're gonna you know put some synthetic testosterone or whatever in your body to to get the uh 20 dollar 20 dollar mid-race preems in this race like they kept call in my race not in the pro race in my race at athens they they called so many twenty dollar preems and my like race brain so many uh yes it's a, definitely a size large shirt for a uh, size small guy every time or a uh a, like a coupon to a pizza place that's in the town the race is in but you don't live there and they're closed already today that's the, that's another classic there's Magner okay we got a brief shot there that was the uh, the second group on the road the Magner group. So this is where I, as a, as a, um, as a, uh, spectator on the ground here got so confused, like which group was which got so confusing. This is the Magna group. These guys are in no man's land between the field. This is the second group on the road. They are trying to get to the breakaway that is trying to get to the back of this group. So let's see how far this is. That was the back of the front group. Here comes the breakaway. So at this point, you may notice, uh, I put it in the title of this video, Justin Williams has dropped. Uh, most of the bigger powerhouse riders are dropped at this point. So it's really impressive that uh, Thomas Gibbons is still in there. You can see him in the orange about 10th wheel here. Orange kit, that's the Colativa Leaders jersey. Black helmet, that's Thomas Gibbons. So there was some drama here. I'm going to go ahead and foreshadow this. There was some drama here with uh, someone getting relegated in, in relation to something that was going on when the catch was being made here. So when the breakaway group is catching that main group, someone I think dropped off the back of that main peloton dropped back to the breakaway group and helped tow them up I think so I want to see this happen because I know somebody got in trouble here but it looks like it's a Medellin rider on the back he's got no reason to uh so maybe it's not him maybe it's not happening yet but something happened and I, I was hearing about it like hearing the announcer talk about it, seeing some some scuttlebutt about it on Twitter after the race, but I wasn't sure exactly who got in trouble and what they got in trouble for doing. But also at this point, like, so many riders have been pulled that... It, so if you fall off the back of this main group, you're getting pulled from the race, but then this is where it gets murky, is the breakaway is about to lap up, so it's like... At what point do you pull those riders that are falling off of the back of the main group? Um, so as a spectator, it got super confusing too because the 
the main group is getting whittled down to the size of the breakaway groups are not that much smaller. It's just like, it gets so crazy to watch. It gets so tactical too. Although this is not as insane as the year 2016, I believe it was, where the same two riders lapped the field three times. Um, Ty Magner, he wants it so bad. Every time that his group would come by me, it was Magner on the front, and he was just all in, just digging so hard. Um, this is Magner on the front right here. Uh, man, he is just digging so deep, going so hard. We got two riders from Medellin in that group. I think they feel like, and they're correctly, that they kind of missed out. I don't think they were ready for how fast how fast and furious that was going to go from the gun. They just just didn't have the... Uh, I mean, obviously, Oscar Sevilla uh, raced the Tour de France. I mean, they, they have the firepower to be there. They I just don't think they were ready for the uh, the fast and furious, like, American style nature of the Criterium racing. So let's be on the lookout for if we can spot the back of the Peloton, somebody doing something untoward as as the breakaway group is making the catch. So this is uh Movenzada's kind of looking around like what? Okay, have they have they lapped up here? No, that wasn't Movenzada. Yeah, almost the entire Cliff Bar team was pulled there. So I was standing over by that uh, that crosswalk, which is where if you were getting pulled, like you obviously can't just get out anywhere because of the barricades. And I, I was seeing the riders coming off the coming off the course. Okay, so this is Chase Group number two. We got uh, that might be. Ooh, Connor Sally from Butcher Box. I'm not sure which Butcher Box rider that is. That's an Amino Rip rider in there. And then, uh, oh yeah, Tom, this race was so good. Like, watching it as a spectator, it was like, what? seeing these guys in real life, the, the stream really does not do it justice. Seeing this race in real life and watching them take that corner three, corner four uh, combination the speed they were taking and after having done it myself at a speed that felt totally insane to me it's uh th this race is awesome i mean again if you got a chance to get to twilight you really want to so this is the beginning of uh speed week which i mentioned but speed week is like a week-long competition um and i want to say legion had a really good run at speed week this year won almost all the races maybe all of the races on the women's side and almost all on the men's side i think in the uh in the pro one two so <laughs> that shot right there uh national champion for best buddies standing on the sidelines there uh if you follow me on instagram i had a sneaky little video where i, I got a video of him standing there watching and said when the uh, national champion is pulled and watching from the sidelines, you know that is a hard race. Um, yeah, Movenzada is still driving the pace. So, okay, that is the chase group. It keeps switching camera angles, and this is where it would really help if we had some uh, some graphics, not just for the points, but if we could have some graphics that uh, let you know what the groups are on the road. And Okay, there's the national champion again, sitting there on the sidelines, pulled from the race. Brutal race. Um, it's an amino rip rider just tacked on. It's really, again, Magner on the front. So I was standing on this back stretch, and uh, every time they would come through, it was Magner on the front, just uh, just ripping. So here's the crazy thing. As it stands now, the guys in this second group, the best they can do is seventh because there were six guys who lapped the field. The best anyone in the field can do, anyone who is in that main field that uh, did not lap up, did not go in the original breakaway, the best they could do would be 14th. But 
if the Ty Magner group gets back up to the main group, then everyone from both of those breakaways is back in contention for the win. Everyone who's still in the race but did not lap up at some point is racing for 14th. So the uh, the tactics get really murky at that point. We got 20 seconds uh, to this breakaway group. This is the chase group. That's uh, Ruben Campagnoni in the long sleeve skin suit. Absolute madman in the long sleeve skin suit for uh, best buddies there. It was, uh, I mean, this is a race in the Southeast. So this was the first one that wasn't like 90 degrees, but it was still like 85 probably when the race started, got down to like, I don't know, high, high seventies, but definitely not long sleeve weather. You, that's a full dedication to uh full dedication to being the um, most arrow guy out there. Wow. So I'm, I'm hearing, I didn't know this about Campagnoni. But I'm hearing that he, uh, so he's Cuban, but he defected actually during a race. He was Cuban, he was doing a race in Canada and actually defected while he was in Canada for the race and uh, never went back to Cuba. So weird, crazy fun fact. Also Florida State Criterium Champion. Um, later, Scott. Uh, I do not run road tubeless. Uh Latex tubes are lighter, and I really haven't had any problems with running lower pressures on them and uh, haven't had any problems with punctures. Running uh, more than like 60, 70 PSI in a tubeless tire, the sealant tends to just shoot out the side anyway. So I don't know. I do latex tubes, which those are not the normal butyl tubes. They're a little bit more expensive, but... They're really light and they're less fuss than uh, tubeless. I do run tubeless on road and gravel and might do tubeless for cross this year. I don't know. We will see. We will see about tubeless for cross this year. So I guess I'm going to do some cross. I'm going to, my season is all messed up because of uh, how late. So another thing about this race, this race is normally not this late. This race is normally much earlier in the season. Um, but with COVID, there was like a delay early in the season and, and USA Crits sort of took all of their early season races and scooted them to the back of the season. So normally, crit season isn't running sort of as deep into cyclocross season. If uh, there was a cyclocross race today in Europe, the uh, Ethius Cross race was today. Uh-oh, okay. Now, I mean, I'm hearing it. Okay, a Team Medellin rider. Okay, this guy on the front from Team Medellin, he dropped back from the main field. He dropped. He didn't just go to the back of the field to let a group catch on. He dropped back from the main field to that breakaway, and now he's driving the breakaway back forward again. So this is the guy... Yeah, this is this is the drama I was hearing. Is that this uh, this Medellin rider, the second Medellin rider who's in this group? So you can't do that. You can't. Uh, one thing you see a lot is riders going to the back of the group and kind of dangling off the back so that it it uh, extends the back of the main group farther for their riders to be able to catch on. But it is not legal to drop back across a gap from, from one group to the group behind that's actually ahead, again, because of the short lap nature, and then drive that group forward, which is what has happened here. It looks like there's... So there's another Team Medellin rider dropping back. Ooh, okay. So that's what it was. I wasn't sure who it, who it was. I had heard that something happened that was uh, untoward. But yeah, Team team Medellin with some uh, questionable uh, the third rider coming off the back. 
Wow, okay. So I guess what happened here is Team Medellin realized that because the uh, group that's about to lap up, so that's the Ty Magner group, the original group of six has now made contact. They're back in the main peloton. The second group, the Ty Magner group, the, the chase group, has not made it to the back of the field. And they're getting within striking distance. And Team Medellin is sending guys not just to the back of the peloton, but off the back of the peloton into that breakaway group. And those guys are driving it to get the second group back in. So yeah, so I think they get disqualified after the race, but that has uh, affected. Yeah, I don't know if they have. Uh, I don't. I, we were talking about radios earlier. I don't know if Team Medellin has radios, but if they do, somebody from the uh, race organization should be talking to their managers and letting them know. So this is another thing that happens is. If, you, uh, if you're a team that doesn't want those guys to lap up, you might go to the front right now and start driving the pace. So Best Buddies doesn't want anybody else to lap up. Um, one, two, three, four Medellin riders there now. So two or three of those Medellin riders dropped back from that main group to the breakaway. Now they're pushing it back forward. I will, going back to the road tubeless thing, uh, this is a course where having wider tires really, really helped. Uh, having raced, I raced a different version of this course in 2017, but it takes in some of the same, like uh, about half of the same roads. But having a wider tire on this course, a wider tire and some lower pressure really helps on this course with the... Uh, how fast you go into this corner right here, corner three, the three, four corner, having a wider tire and a little bit more rubber on the road and you can really lay it over right there. It really helps. Man, look at the crowds. So awesome seeing crowds like this for a, you know, American race that is, uh, you know, it's not like a grand tour. It's, it's criterium. It's a party. So awesome. You, you can't hear it on the stream because it would get a um, it would probably get a, a strike on YouTube or whatever. But they have a uh, up there on our left on the stage. They have a DJ who's uh, who's DJing the whole time. Frankie Andreu is up there. Okay, so eleven riders have now lapped. So the Ty Magner group has lapped the field. Ty Magner, against all odds, and with a little bit of help from Team Medellin, although I think he might have gotten there. His group might have gotten there regardless. They were close enough that it was striking distance. Regardless, Magner is back in the running for the win. Uh, and he was... he Legion is working for Magner. So, But he has put so much work into this. So now... In the field, it's like, what does the field do at this point? Only the 11 guys who have lapped up and uh, are racing for the win. So there's not a lot of incentive for the rest of these guys to be setting pace unless you're going to be setting pace, unless you have a teammate who has lapped up and you're going to be setting pace for them. So with five to go, that's when the next uh, point sprint goes. And now they're questioning at the race whether uh, anyone can go for those points or whether it only those points only go for the 11 riders that have lapped up. My guess there is that only the 11 riders who have lapped the field would be in con contention for that point sprint. But that's... Uh, like I said, I, I said it in the uh, I said it in the uh, in the in the title of this video, but this race was crazy, insane. Uh, Ed Friere from Legion, right here, ripping it, corner three. 
yeah, he rode the Olympics in Tokyo straight back to this uh, American crit racing. So awesome. So Magner is back on the same lap. I'm actually surprised that Legion is letting Freer do these little attacks because I think they want to. They still want to set it up for Magner, especially now that Magner has made it up to the main group and uh, he's back in the in the running. He's the hometown hero. <laughs> they just said a uh, hundred riders, a hundred guys have been pulled from this race. That's how hard this race is. Um. Such an awesome race. A hundred guys eliminated, though. A hundred pro riders. So this is a, a a point in the race where I really I'm interested to see. Okay, we got Alec Cohen and uh, Spencer Movenzada. So I think Movenzada going off the front here. I was about to say, I as a spectator on the ground was not sure what was going on here. So now that I have some clarity, I'm interested to watch this. Looks like Movenzada and Cowan. So Movenzada in the red for Butcher Box. He's the one who's in second in the uh, in the Best Young Rider competition. I think he is hoping that he could maybe... Yeah, no problem, Tom. I love talking about this stuff. This is the conversation that I was having with complete randos uh, on the side of the course um, during the race. So it's uh, it's way more fun to to sit here and have this conversation with you guys. But Movenzada, uh, I think he's hoping that uh, Hernandez, who is the current leader, that he might catch Hernandez sleeping a little bit. Hernandez uh, is the guy in the gray jersey who was in that original breakaway of six, lapped the field with Movenzada. But he might be content to sit in the field now, thinking that things are going to be, thinking that things are going to settle in a little bit and they're just playing for the finish. Movenzada. Uh, trying to potentially set himself up for the five to go point sprint, and just just catching uh, just catching Hernandez sleeping a little bit. This is a great move by Movenzada. This I feel like Movenzada is maybe like the underrated MVP of this uh this American crit season. Uh, I would say like Movenzada, uh, Clever Martinez, who was not at this race, but has had an incredible season and has not been lauded enough. I think, I think those are two of the uh, dark horse top riders of the season. That's just like such an aggressive. So Movenzada lapped the field with that original breakaway, waited for things to, uh, to come back together and then attacked the field again once everyone settled in. How do these brakes end up going so much faster than the field? Are they just rested and more fresh for this race? Um, thank you. Also, first of all, uh, Ian, appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I really started YouTubing for the Zwift stuff too, but now we're we're back to real life racing. So I want to uh, apply the same thinking to to this real life stuff that I also love as much or more as the, than the Zwift stuff. So the breakaway is going so much faster than the field. Um, on a course like this, I talked about it a little bit earlier, but this corner specifically is very technical. And the field doesn't have much of an advantage on a course like this. So normally on a course that has a significant amount of flat, there's so much draft that the field has a big advantage. If you're 10 or 15 wheels back, um, you're going to be able to remain so much fresher just by being in the draft than the riders in the small breakaway off the front and those you know 10 15 20 riders can churn through on the front and keep that speed super high on a course like this which they're going downhill now into the corner downhill back uphill it's it's all very up and down the corners pinch down in a couple of spaces it's really hard to uh take smooth even turns if you're in that bigger breakaway group or in that bigger peloton group and if you're in the smaller breakaway group you can sort of line these corners up exactly how you want to you can pedal as hard as you want to the whole time um so that's that's how especially on this course uh, and i think that's why we haven't seen successful breakaways at a lot of the races that uh do not have a significant hill if you missed it earlier so Really, from this corner, this is corner four, 
up to corner one, that's about a 3% uphill the whole way. And because that's one of the only places where you can consistently put down power on this course, pretty much every time up, these guys are riding over, to put it in Zwift terms, they're riding probably 120 to 150% FTP up this whole climb the whole time because somewhere around right about here, you got to come off the pedals because pinches down a little bit for turn one and then it starts going downhill again um so it, in a longer race the breakaway gets away like in a tour de france stage they're really letting the breakaway go away now when i say letting that's not like it's uh it's not like a cheating or a cheap kind of thing it's not easy to get into the breakaway either when i say letting the breakaway go it's that when the race is six hours long, I mean, think about you could always stand up and sprint, you know, in the over the course of six hours. But you got to choose those moments wisely. And the guys that go in that early breakaway in a longer like stage race or road race, they are spending matches that everyone back in the group is is placing their bets on. Like this is a long day in the saddle. We've got a lot of time to get them back. We'll let them go now, meaning like. Not that I can't stand up and chase them down, but that I don't want to spend that energy yet. So that's sort of like the the trade-off that's being made in those longer races. In these shorter criteriums, uh, a lot of these attacks that get um, the attacks that get separation. Okay, I got to get back to this race now. We have got another breakaway from from the group so thanks um yeah any teams who can beat legion so if best buddies have um i think that legion really uh thank you charlie also for zwift compliment appreciate it i did two zwift races right before this that i didn't uh didn't stream i was just doing it for the love but i'll be on some more zwift uh pretty soon I think that Legion came in um, to this season and really brought like a new level of focus to USA crits that like we really haven't seen in American racing in a long time. And uh, all right, so this is this is a, a deep thinking thing that I've I've been thinking of for a long time for all of my uh, people that have made it this deep into the video. So. I think that what Legion really brings to the table is that they are the first American team to focus on American criterium racing where the leaders of the team are not looking to go to Europe. Like Justin and Corey have said specifically, like we've looked at Europe, we've raced in Europe a little bit. Uh, I think Justin has, Corey hasn't maybe, but either way, they've both said like, we want to race in America we have no goals of going to Europe. We want to make, we want to elevate American racing. In the past, even when you had like the United Healthcare team really dominating American Criterium racing, if you were the best rider on on uh, UHC United Healthcare, you were looking for uh, to move over to to the European scene. So, if you were one of these teams trying to get sponsors, and you did get someone with the sort of like star power. Uh, charisma, whatever, of a Justin or a or a um, Corey Williams, you kind of know that like once their star rises to a certain degree, you're going to lose them, and your sponsors know that too. So I think part of what Legion has been able to bring to this level of racing is, for the first time, they can sort of sell their their team as a brand based on personalities in a way that, that American teams have not been able to do in the past. If you had someone that was as good and as dominant as a Justin or a Corey, which, speaking of which, Corey didn't come to this. Justin's been dropped from this race. Oh! Wow. Eddie Freire, solo crash. Okay, that's one that I totally missed when I was there. Did not see Freire crash solo. That's wild. It's crazy that he crashed in corner two. That is one where corner one downhill into corner two. So that could get away from you, I think, if you were. Uh... There was also some uh, manhole covers 
around in that area. So I wonder if he uh, the, lost the front wheel on a manhole cover. But yeah, as far as like can, can teams beat Legion? So I think that a lot of teams who would have been really up there in, in past USA Crits team, past USA Crits seasons. So I think like Butcher Box, Automatic, um, Project Echelon, all of those teams, like as they exist this season, would have been getting wins, best buddies too, would have been getting wins in past USA Crits seasons. But the fact that Legion has brought this like level of focus to the American racing with the sponsorship, um, the sponsorship dollars they have backing them, and the tactic that they've employed, no one has really done that like take the front of the race from the beginning, put our whole team up there six deep and just dictate the speed the whole race. No one has really done that in American Criterium Racing. No one has been able to do that. And it seems so obvious, like, yeah, what you want to do is is control the front the whole time. No one has been able to do that. The closest thing that's ever happened to that, again, is United Healthcare that I was uh, just talking about. Um, United Healthcare used to have what what people called the blue train. But even the blue train, and the, the blue train was all of their riders in blue together on the front of the race, even the blue train would, uh, would go up front and uh, they would really not take the front until about 20 laps to go. Okay, so getting back to what's going on in the race right now, um, after that uh, little breakaway of two that was Mo Venzada and Friere, I think, together, um, looks like we've got a few other guys, including Hernandez, in the gray, who uh, Hernandez is uh, the guy that Movenzada is really... So really what we're seeing play out here for the win is the super aggressive racing for the best young riders jersey between Spencer Movenzada in the red, who went up the road there to try and catch Hernandez sleeping. Hernandez was sleeping a little bit for a minute there and then uh, bridged up to him. So now we have this group. It's So these guys have broken away, lapped up the field, sat in the field for a few laps, and then attacked again. And now they're in a new breakaway once again off the front. So totally insane. But having said all that about the team stuff, I think that a lot of those teams are going to sort of recalibrate their strategies coming into next season. Uh, this year, Legion, the way they've been riding, I think just caught a lot of people off guard and, uh, so when a race like this has pre presented itself um, or a race like Birmingham where Legion really didn't send their A squad, um, which you can go back and watch that on my channel. Uh, Birmingham, I'm from Birmingham, Alabama, so that's my, that's my home race. I was at that one. Um, anytime it seems like Legion is a little bit weak or maybe the course doesn't uh, lend itself to that strategy Legion has been doing, that's sort of when guys have been taking their shots. Um, famously, Project Echelon did beat them this year at um, at the uh, Armed Forces Cycling Classic Criterium, which that's one that is super long, which when a Criterium... This is another thing with this race and getting back to the question of like how long should these races be. I think about an hour, hour and 15 minutes is as long as any of these teams. You're only allowed to field six riders, so... Six riders probably on their own can't control the race for longer than that, for, for longer than an hour or so. Yeah, it is. Uh, Ian, it was, it was so tough being here on the ground. I mean, it was awesome, like the energy and the number of people and just like, I mean, I did the amateur race right before this, so I kind of like had a sense of how it was. But then watching these guys coming by so fast, it was like when when uh, when Ty Magner lapped up. It was it was like so confusing to me because it was so unlikely that he would lap up as big of a gap as as the group had gotten before him before he even went. There was that breakaway group that was almost lapped up before he attacked. I didn't know what was going on with those Medellin riders. This was a really messy race, but that's also what made it really fun to watch is is how crazy it was. But yeah, what we're seeing play out at the front here is is 
the super aggressive racing between uh, Mo Venzada in the red and Hernandez in the gray. Hernandez is actually on Best Buddies, but Best Buddies is in the uh, green kits, but he is wearing the gray um, lap, the Best Young Rider jersey for the USA Crit Series. Um, I do really love problems with like the broadcast and lack of, lack of graphics aside. Really love what USA Crits has done with broadcasting all of these races all season, um, creating like a cohesive narrative for the whole season. And really like this race, how uh, aggressive and interesting it is, is a function of the point system they've put forward. So because of, here we go, Michael Hernandez and Spencer Movenzada, these guys are going for the uh, five to go lap points. Let's see how many laps we got left to go here. Keep zoom. Yeah, so that was Spencer Movenzada in the red there just picked up some points on Hernandez in the gray because that was five laps to go, which is a points prem lap. So that's a... Uh, that it, those points that that best young rider competition is giving him a reason to go hard other than just winning the race and it's keeping the pace high this whole time yeah this course was super fun to race too though i i honestly hope and this is probably an unpopular opinion so this is a course that's it's been used occasionally when there's road work on the normal course or some sort of conflict but i actually hope that athens twilight continues to be on this course and I would love to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put my hat in the ring, or go ahead and put this out here, and maybe it'll force me to do it. But next year, I want to do all of Speed Week. I want to do. I want to do the full week of Criterium Racing. Uh, I kind of had plans to do Spartanburg. Actually, a local rider to me, um, Riley, who races for the uh, Bear Development Team, won. Uh, Birmingham rider won the Cat 2 race at Spartanburg, so that was pretty awesome for for us here in Birmingham. Okay, three to go. So this is where I really don't know what happened. So I'm assuming, I think Legion is probably still all in for Magner here. I want to see what happens to Magner because I know he was going for the win. We got Team Medellin going to the front. <coughs> so I wonder if these Medellin riders, the guys that dropped off the main group and helped that smaller group bridge back up, I wonder if those guys know that they are going to get disqualified. Because even that could change the uh, that could change the dynamic a little bit in two ways. Like one is if they know they're going to, they don't know they're going to get disqualified. They might be thinking they're racing for the win. Uh, and if they do know they're disqualified, they might be thinking, like, why not just go to the front and rip it? Because, you know, I'm, it doesn't matter what I do. So I, I can, you know, just totally waste myself to set up a teammate or something. So I guess Medellin only has one guy that is actually uh, in contention. Well, you can... I can hear the crowd just going totally... People are banging on the barricades. The uh, the energy, the lights and stuff, so awesome at this race. Every okay, people with cowbells does get kind of confusing because traditionally in bike racing, the ringing of a bell either means there's a preem, a cash preem, or a points preem on that lap, or that that is the last lap. Uh, so I've been confused a few times hearing a spectator with a bell and being confused whether that's the last lap or not and there's really i mean the lap counter is only about this big okay so magner is punching his legs right now which could it's two things it could either be him uh getting pumped up trying to uh get the adrenaline flowing or he might be cramping up so maybe if he's cramping um he he may at this point have told his teammates like, "Hey guys, I'm I'm cramping up. I'm I'm done." So, one to go. Okay, this is where you would traditionally hear. All right, Cohen went to the front, set pace. So Legion really only had 
three, four riders left here. They couldn't do that. Uh, they couldn't do what they normally do and set set a super high pace and just burn riders one after another for uh, the last three laps. So you can see guys kind of looking at each other here. Mo Venzada goes to the front. Oh man, I really want to see this finish. I hope we get a good camera shot where I can see what's going on here. Corner three. Everybody's through clean. We still got Mo Venzada on the front. This is a long sprint. It is really long. 300 meters from that fourth corner to the line. Ah, zoom in, zoom in. Let me see what is happening. Uh, we got to get a better camera. <laughs> What is going on with this smoke? Tyler Williams. So I was hoping that I was going to see a little bit more of what actually happened between corner four and the finish there, but Williams. So the sprinter normally is uh, Justin Williams, but I think the fact that this race got so crazy they were going to work for Ty Magner today. Ty Magner has been doing a lot of the work for them all season. This is his home race. Um, they were going to work for him today, but things got so crazy. He wasted, not wasted, he used a lot of energy doing that lapping up uh, with that second group. Looked like he was cramping up at the end there. And then uh, Tyler Williams, who's also on Legion, but not related to Justin and Corey, um, I think he he just uh, sensed that that or maybe even was told by Ty that Ty's legs were failing. All right, so here's the magic of uh, looking at this later is we can uh, skip it ahead and see if we see. Oh, there's Justin. So I think Justin was on the sideline after he got pulled on the radio. Someone was asking about radios earlier. I think Justin was on the sideline on the radio uh, dictating tactics to everybody else. So Justin there is normally their sprinter, but he, he didn't make it because this was really not a sprinter's course with that 3% hill. I mean, almost half the course was 3% uphill. You can see the frat boys just losing their minds uh, right above me right here. That's what makes this race uh, so so crazy and so fun. Let's see if we can skip it ahead to the podium. Women's podium. The women's racing has been great too. I just haven't had the time to uh, double the amount of time to cover all of it. But man, Skylar Schneider from Legion has been just dominating on the women's side this season. Um, we got team podiums here. This is another interesting aspect of the USA Crit Series is that there are a lot of teams who are going for these team points because they do care about this team competition. Every rider on the team who finishes scores points for their finish position and scores points from all those intermediates. So teams like Butcher Box, teams like Cliff Bar are uh, really looking for those team points, even when uh, Legion is sort of dictating all the, all the wins of the number one spot in each individual race. Those guys still have something to play for, so that's pretty interesting. Uh all right, well, I'm going to get out of here pretty soon. Uh, thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Appreciate y'all. Um, fun watch. Uh, next, so we've got uh, Winston-Salem is the next race on the USA Crits calendar coming up next weekend. Unless I can't make it happen, I will probably try to watch that one live. Uh, be interesting to see if Thomas Givens can hold on to the overall, if uh, anybody's able to take that from him. We'll see if... Legion sends an A squad and tries to get another another win under their belt for the season, or if they are, as some people have predicted, kind of done with USA crits for the year. Um, Cyclocross is starting up, uh, so we'll see if like Project Echelon may not like. I assume we're not going to see Kerry Werner racing with Project Echelon anymore because he's going to be over. I think he raced Go Cross in uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, somewhere around there. He raced Go Cross today, um, I believe. So it'll be interesting to see who is still has their head in the game of this super late season. But Winston Salem is another one of the the big races, the ones that has some history and some some uh, je ne sais quoi or whatever. Uh, 
and they're having a USA Crits race on Saturday and then an international race on Sunday. So some of the teams from England that do the tour series are coming over. I'm going to be interested to see how that race plays out with some super different teams in the mix. Uh, see what goes on there. So yeah, thanks everybody for hanging out. Keep your eyes peeled on the channel. Oh, I'll have my race, uh, my onboard footage from the amateur finals coming out pretty soon. And you can actually get a sense of like how fast this course is and how crazy turn three is from that uh, POV footage. I think I had some good takeaways from that. There was some interesting stuff going on there. And I will be doing some more Zwift racing, trying to get fit for my own cyclocross season. So those of you that are here for the, the uh, Zwift and RGT content, I will certainly be doing that. I'll be doing more of that over on Twitch. So if you're not following my Twitch and you want to see me racing live, uh, check me out over there. Yeah.